Hello gardeners, this is John Bowen back with part two of winter sowing. In this part, we're going to talk about making and planting the containers and answer some of our audience questions. Let's talk about the process here, the actual process of sowing. Let's talk about the requirements and just go through the process. First thing you're going to need is some sort of a container. A gallon milk jug like this is kind of the standard model that people use for winter sowing. It looks really ugly, but there's several things we have here. First thing we're going to have to worry about is drainage. These things are outdoors all winter. They're going to get wet. And you may be able to see here, if I move it to just the right spot, that there are holes. I've got holes in the side. I've got holes in the bottom. You can see little dots there. And the important thing when you're doing drainage is to get holes in the bottom of the container and also up around the sides a little bit because when it sits on the ground, those bottom holes can get plugged up. The side holes may do your main drainage, but you have to have really good drainage. So you have to prepare your containers to make that happen. You need a way to get the water, the rain and the snow into these. So again, milk jugs are good because they have a nice size opening here. You leave them open, you don't cap them. They just sit out there, the rain comes in, enough gets in there to keep them wet all winter long and all spring long. It's just an interesting balance of water in and water out. You need a good seal along the side. You can see here, gardener's best friend, duct tape. You wanna seal these edges up because you don't want too much water rushing in here. And it also is a way to make the container durable so you can grab its handle and it doesn't fall apart even though you've cut it open. You need light, obviously, you're growing seedlings. So you need something that's translucent. Milk jugs are great. This is the, the more translucent kind. Sometimes you get those that are a little bit denser they seem to work fine also. Hold it up to the light, peer through it. If you can see light coming in through the sides, you're probably going to be fine, especially if you have your jugs out in the sun. So either the translucent ones or the not so translucent ones, they're okay. Don't go solid, don't try a bucket. You have to have light in there. You need some room for your roots to grow. My soil level is right here, about halfway up the jug. So I've got three inches or so of soil down there for my roots. That's plenty for them. And you also need room for your shoots to grow. The upper half of the jug is the space where my shoots are gonna be growing because much of their time, they're gonna be growing with the top on. They're not gonna be exposed to the complete atmosphere. They've gotta have room in there to expand and do the growth that's so important to get good transplants for the spring. So what works? What makes good winter sowing containers? Well, the gallon milk jug I said is kind of the gold standard Half gallon milk jugs are fine. Two liter soda bottles are good. I would tend to stay away from the green ones. Sorry, 7-Up, but I wouldn't use the green ones because I think that green light is an odd color for those plants to be growing in. But clear two liter containers are good. I use one liter containers. This is just a, a one liter soda bottle. The clear one liters are great. Many gardeners don't like these. They say they're too small. They don't have enough room for the plants. I find that a few seeds in here is great. It, it's done very well for me. The trick on these is they're not all that stable and they tend to blow over. So if you do use these, you need to make sure they're in a spot where the wind or the squirrels or the dogs aren't gonna knock them around too much. Pack them tightly. But these work great. You can use other containers. This is an old fertilizer container and it's perfectly usable. It's clear. But the thing you notice on this is that the lid is really, really large. I would not put this out in the garden with a lid opening like that on it. I'd probably use the original lid, leave it on, and drill a bunch of holes or poke a bunch of holes in the lid so I get my water in. That big opening is too much for this size container. You can use big things. Here's a cat litter jug. It's huge. But again, the lid's about the right size for the container, and this would be great for plants that are going to get fairly tall. I would not hesitate to use a jug like this. It's translucent. It works really well. You can use deli containers. Deli containers work okay. The things to watch for is that you get enough depth in the base that you have room there for your roots. So you probably fill the soil almost to the top of this one and get at least two inches of soil there. You notice when it's closed, you don't have very much lid. You don't have very much space in there. And so this would be good for small plants. I would say things like coriander or parsley or something. It's going to grow fairly small seedlings. I wouldn't try tomatoes in this because they get so big so fast, 
that you just simply don't have room with the lid closed for the plants to expand the way they need to. And also you notice the lid on this is solid. There are no holes at all. If you're going to get that rainwater in, you're gonna to have to come and poke holes in the lid and let some water come in, as well as holes in the bottom to let water out. So these will work in a pinch though. They're not bad. Milk jugs are easier, but you could use these. Some people even used plastic bags. These slider type bags are not bad at all, but the ones that have the, the slider on, not just the sealable. Close it down near the end, something like, oh, two inches from the end, kind of kink it a little bit. Put a clothespin on the end. Let me do it and I'll show you better here. Clothespin on the end like that, if you can see that now. There we go. The clothespin holds that open. And you can plant like this, cut some slits in the bottom, put your soil halfway up, your rainwater will come in here. That's a big enough opening to keep this thing wet all winter. So these would work in a pinch. They're a little harder to use than the rigid containers, but if all of a sudden somebody gives you some seeds, you can't find any milk jugs, you want to plant them, don't be afraid to try a plastic bag. Be creative. So how do we prepare the containers? How do we actually get the container ready to go? Well, let me show you. First rule is water in, water out. Here's one of the more opaque milk jugs, but this one is still okay. Water in, water out. You have to make both parts of that happen. So first question I have is drainage. I need to make holes in the bottom and holes part way up the sides. What's the easiest way to make holes in a plastic container? As many answers to that as there are gardeners. Some things that you hear, some suggestions. Some people say, drill them. And if you drill them, this little drill bit, you know, put where you can see it better against the milk jug here. This is called a spade bit. It's supposed to a twist drill. It has a sharp tip on it. And it's a lot easier to get a purchase on the plastic with that sharp tip. So a small spade drill works really, really well. Some people will take a screwdriver like this and they will just heat it up in a flame. If you have a gas stove, that's great. Heat up the screwdriver, melt your way through the plastic, turn it around a little bit and work it out so you get good holes. I have heard people use glue guns. They get the tip wet on the glue gun and use that to melt your way through the plastic. Haven't done that one myself, but it sounds like a possibility. A word of caution here. If you are melting plastic indoors, turn your fans on, get some ventilation. The fumes coming off this plastic may be a little bit toxic and you don't want to inhale too much of that. My favorite way to make the holes is to actually use my big, saw like this with the giant blade on it. And I'm gonna ask my wife, Michelle, who's on the camera here to zoom this down for us. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, it's a big saw, it's gonna be noisy. Don't be scared. It works better if you have an extra pair of hands there to hold it. But what you see I'm doing in this is actually cutting slits. And what I like about the slits is I get the, the slit on the bottom to get my bottom drainage out. I get the slit on the side to get my top drainage out. And it actually works pretty well. And besides that, it just gives me an excuse to use my big saw for something in the garden. It's probably just a guy thing, but it works for some of us. But you need a way to get the holes in there. I'm not gonna cut any more because that would drive us crazy. You need holes all the way around the side. Definitely good drainage is a key part of this. Next, if you're going to be not using a milk jug, if you're using something that's closed, you need the same kind of holes on the top. But they need to be big enough to let the rain or the snow in. It's not enough just to poke little tiny pinholes in there. Let some water in. Don't be afraid of getting water in there. Next step, you need to cut the jug open, cut the jug in half so you can get the plants in and get the plants out. My favorite way to do it is to come on a milk jug. I like to cut right under where the handle is on this. And I'll usually take a marking pin and just mark it so I have a line to follow. Otherwise, freehand cutting sometimes for me gets just a little bit wobbly. So I'll mark it around like that and try to get it to come out fairly straight. So I've divided it in half. My soil is gonna go down here. My plants are growing up here. A trick on these, you want to leave a hinge. You want to leave a spot where the top is not totally disconnected. So I'm gonna to come right here 
right here and make a mark maybe an inch and a half apart. This area right here is my hinge area. Then you have to cut this thing open. How to do it? Well, once you get a hole in it, you can use a pair of heavy scissors. That, that will work. My favorite is to use a sharp box knife like this. This works great. I can start right at the hinge, poke it, and just gently, don't be in a hurry, just gently work your way around, following your line as best you can. A home cooking show right now. I'm going to eat the egg whites until they're stiff. Don't overbeat them. Right for the label. Keep going. Stop at your hinge mark like that. And pop it open. It opens like a clamshell. I have this little bit of hinge left. And that keeps my tops attached, makes it just much easier to handle. This part we fill with soil. And we'll do that in just a minute. And then once we have soil in there and, and we have our seeds planted, we're ready to go, we're going to do two really important things. First, we're going to put a label in this. We definitely want a label on it because you think you're gonna remember what you planted. I always think I'm gonna remember what I planted. Uh-uh, you're going to forget. Put a label inside. You can label the outside. You can write on the carton. You can write on the duct tape. It washes off, trust me, it washes off. A label inside is a safe way to go. And then once we get it planted and it's wet, it's ready to go, we're going to duct tape this thing back together. And that's an easy process too. It doesn't have to be one solid piece of duct tape. It can be several shorter pieces that you can handle. Right on one side, maybe near your hinge. wrapping and going around the side. The duct tape does two things for us. It seals the sides because if the sides are open and they bow a little bit, we can get a lot of rain coming in right there in that crack. And if we get too much rain coming in, we can flood out the seeds. So we want that to be sealed. And also if it's duct taped, then you can pick it up and you can move it around without fear of the bottom suddenly falling out and making a mess. So duct tape it all the way around. Make sure it's well done there, and then you are good to go. So what should we use for soil in a container like this? Let's set that aside. Soil is something that seems to get people all excited and, and all worried about it. What should we use for soil? If you go on some of the webs, the Facebook groups I suggest, Cheryl Mann has an excellent Facebook group. Every now and then they start a thread on the soil and people just go on and on and on about soil. And pretty much you have two things to consider as far as I can see. They all work really well. First, it has to be light and well draining. This is one, you can see the peat in there, you can see the little pieces of perlite in there if I get it up close to you like that. This is a very light soil, it's a well draining soil, it's a good potting soil. You don't want to use what's called garden soil, you don't want to use dirt, you don't want stuff you dig up because you want it to drain really, really well. You can rot those seeds, you can drown the young seedlings. So light soil. And the second question you have is the question about fertilizer. Remember, you're planting these seeds in the jug. They're gonna sit there, they're gonna grow up the seedlings with any luck at all. We'll talk about this in a moment. You won't have to water these. You'll just be letting nature take care of that. So the question is about fertilizer. Do you want a starter fertilizer in there for your seeds? If you're going to add some fertilizer, some liquid fertilizer from the top and water them later, you can do that. You can add fertilizer and use a soil without it. I prefer to use a soil that has good seed starter fertilizer already in it. I think it makes my life easier not to have to worry about nutrition there when they're still locked up in the jugs. So my favorite is Fox Farms. I like the Fox Farm soil. Pro Mix makes a really good soil that wets really nicely, but it doesn't have fertilizer in it. You don't want to use a soil with the water retention granules. miracle Grow makes the material in the blue bag. Those water retention granules hold too much water for the winter. So stay with a good, plain, well-draining soil, either one that has a seed starter fertilizer in it or one that doesn't and add your own later. That's totally up to you. Just keep it light, keep it well-draining. One admonition here that you hear a lot from people that are talking about seed starting 
wet that soil down before you put it in the jug, or at least before you plant your seeds. You may put it in the jug and then super wet the jug, that's fine. But this soil is dry. Fox Farm doesn't wet very quickly. It doesn't have any detergents in it. So it takes a little while to wet. And if you're not careful, you can end up with the surface wet and the under part dry and not even know it. It looks wet, it's not. So make sure your soil is well wetted before you put it in. Now we have our container, it's full of soil. We're ready to plant some seeds on it. What do we have to do to plant the seeds? It's just like planting in the garden. It's just like planting them in your 10, 20 trays to do transplants. The only caution here is that you might want to plant them a little less deeply. They're gonna stay nice and wet. They're going to not have any problem with drying out. So you can afford to have them a little bit shallower it may help a little bit with their tendency sometimes to get overdone and to rot. Just keep them just a little bit shallow. Soil's in. Now we're going to seal up the sides. I already started that. We're going to seal up the sides all the way. It's labeled. Next trick, put it outside. This is not an in-house process. This is an outdoors process. Put it outside. I put mine in the sun. Some people like to have theirs out in the shade but I like to have mine actually out there in the sun because they're seedlings, they need the light. And also I want that freeze-thaw cycle. I want them to get cold, I want them to get warm. You put them in the shade, they may stay just too uniformly cool, but if you get that freeze-thaw, that's the stratification process. That's actually part of the scarification process that breaks those hard seed coats. You want the freezing, you want the thawing. So put them in the sun, they're not going to overheat, you'll be surprised, they'll be great. Last thing we need to talk about is watering. Well, if you have them outside around here, usually in the winter, we get rain, we get snow, that's enough. You should see condensation form on the inside of the jug. The clearer jugs, the ones that are more translucent, it's easier to see. If you go out and look at them, you'll see water beads formed in there. That's all the water you need. In my experience around here, if you put these out, they are not going to dry out. You are not going to have to water them. If you pick one up and it really starts feeling light, and you're worried about it, go ahead and water. Go ahead and put water in, but put it in carefully. Try to spray it in. Don't just dump some in out of the cup, because if you do, you may wash all your seeds to the outside of the container, and that's not a good thing. But probably in the winter, you aren't going to need any water. And that's your physical setup. Just cut them, plant them, seal them up, stick them outside. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. So let's pause now before we talk about how you actually handle the plants that you get. And let me ask if you have any questions about the physical setup. Take a minute here if you haven't yet, put them in the Q&A. Let Melissa tell us whether there's anything we need to talk about about the physical part. John, we have several questions in the Q&A right now. Okay, so to go back over your process again, Michelle noticed that in your example demonstration, you were using a white jug. Is a white jug okay? A white jug is okay. I have used both kinds, both the white ones and the, the more clear ones. And, and the way I judge it is I take it into a well-lit room and I look into it. And if I see that it looks like there's a lot of light in there, then I'm okay. And, and here's where I make the distinction. I collect cat litter jugs because they're just so handy around the garden. This cat litter jug, as you can see, is one of the ones that's fairly clear. It lets light in pretty well. I have some other ones that are heavier plastic. They're a white plastic like this, but they're heavier than the milk jugs. I won't use them. I think they cut out too much light. So a white milk jug is okay. I would not go with a heavy white plastic cat litter jug because they just build the jugs heavier to hold the weight of that cat litter. But peer into it, let that be your judge. And if you're at all questionable about it, stay with the clear ones. Great, thank you. And Michelle has a question. Do you water the soil before you duct tape the jug together? Yes, and I may have confused you there by showing you the duct taping process. I start with it totally, pardon my ripping duct tape here. I will take the jug that is just been cut like this. And what I do with them is once they have, they have all the holes done, Cut your drainage holes before you cut the jug open because the more rigid the jug is, the easier it is to get your holes in the, in the bottom. But once it's ready to go, I fill this with soil and then I will take this over to the laundry tub or the sink or the bucket of water. 
I will immerse it or something. I will get my soil totally wet in the container just like this. Then I will plant my seeds and cover it with a little bit of soil on the top. I may dampen that soil just a little bit too. And then I will close it up full of soil ready to go. So duct taping, oh, stick in my label of course, and then duct taping is the last process. I showed you a little earlier on, it may have been confusing there, but get the wet soil, get it planted, get it totally done, because you're not planting from the top. You're not trying to build a terrarium in a wine bottle here. You need the space to get your seeds put in here. Great, thank you. And Anne asks, just for clarification, you said Fox, you were using Fox Farm soil? I use Fox Farm. I like it because it's light. I like it because it has a good quality organic seed starting fertilizer in it so I don't have to worry about them. I have used other things. I've used the Pro Mix and added some liquid miracle Grow after the seeds start to come up. That works. I just, I like the Fox Farm because I can get it locally and I know it's a consistently high quality product. But there are many others and, and anything that's light and well draining is going to work for you ultimately. Great. And Sharon asks, what do you use to create the labels? Oh, people use many different things. I am willing to give myself some luxuries in life. So I buy little bundles of these plastic PVC labels. And the, the only redeeming virtue here is that they claim they're made out of recycled PVC. So I feel a little better about using the plastic. I like plastic labels because they're not going to decompose. I write on them with pencil. Pencil is the best. Pencil doesn't fade. Pencil doesn't wash off. Other people use popsicle sticks. Some people find old window blinds and cut the slats into pieces and use the slats. It's in protected inside the jug, but it needs to be something that's going to hold up. So plastic or wood. Great. And we have several people asking, where can you buy the Fox Farms soil? I buy the Fox Farm soil at this season's gardening on Tunnel Road. I think there are other people that have it. It just is a place that I like to go and look at their plants and poke around there. So I, I buy it there. And I think there are other sources for it. Okay, we have lots of questions now. Will you clarify again, do you need to poke holes in the top of the milk jug or only in the bottom? Only in the bottom. This, the regular opening in the top of the milk jug is perfect. You get just exactly enough rain in there to keep that whole soil saturated. I would only poke holes in a container like this that had relative to the overall area of the container had a giant opening. That's too big an opening. I would poke holes in this. The milk jugs are fine. I would poke holes in a deli container because it has no holes at all. So I would poke holes in a container this size. This is about a foot long. I'd probably poke one, two, three, four. I'd probably poke a dozen holes across the top of this one just to be sure I was getting water in. But the milk jugs, no, leave them alone. They are almost like somebody had designed them for winter sowing. They are perfect. That's great. We have several folks who are asking how many seeds you put in, in these containers. Oh, that's an extraordinarily good question. I was going to come to that one in a, a bit, but let's come to that one now. How many seeds do you put in? And let me answer it two ways. I put in too many seeds. It's usually a bad idea. What happens is these seeds are going to germinate better than you expect. Now, I know that for many of us that do seed saving, sometimes we aren't sure what our germination rate is going to be. And so the tendency is going to be to over sow. So it's tempting on a milk jug like this to just come and, and start sprinkling seeds across the top. But the answer to that question isn't so simple because you have to think about how am I going to get these plants out of here? How dense are they going to be? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just for today's purposes, so we have a plant to work with, I planted a bunch of radishes in a deli container. And you can see from this, that there are probably 250 radishes in this container. This is madness. Knowing how my germination of my radishes is and that I want to get them out, I would have been better off planting maybe a dozen seeds because they're probably all gonna germinate. The germination rate is really high in these winter sowing jugs. My suggestion to you is plant 
fewer seeds than you think you're going to need and maybe plant more jugs. So in a milk jug, if I was planting tomatoes in a milk jug, I would plant six. And if only half of them come up, well, I'd put some more in another milk jug. I'd rather have more jugs with fewer seeds simply because it's easier to get the seedlings out when you're done. So be conservative. More jugs, fewer seeds. Trust they're going to germinate. Other questions? So we have two specific growing questions. Marilyn would like to know if she could start poppies this way. And another question was about tomato tomatoes. Okay, let's do the tomatoes first because it's the easiest. You can absolutely start tomatoes this way. It works really well. But again, you have to be very careful with our erratic spring weather because those tomatoes are not frost hardy. Before they germinate, they're fine. Freezing them outside, if it gets down to you know, 10 degrees and they haven't germinated, no problem. It's not gonna hurt the tomatoes. But once they germinate, they're vulnerable. What people will do once they start to germinate is to put a, like a blanket over the whole jug or the whole collection of jugs. Just cover it all and give it some insulation. Alternately, if you know you have the tomatoes and you see they're up, you know, leave their lids on them, but you may want to bring them in the garage or something just to keep them out of the frost because they're vulnerable to that frost, but they germinate really well and they isn't going to be a problem until they actually start to get into the, the seedling stage. And even then, if they do freeze back a little bit, if they get nipped, if they turn kind of black, they will probably recover. Mine looked horrible. I almost threw them out and I thought, oh, well, let me set them aside. They came back fine. Took a little time, but they're tough little plants. The poppies, I think, same thing. The poppies you can sow in the early spring outdoors. I would just plant them and let them go. I think that they're going to be winter hardy. I think the question you have to ask yourself is, is this plant winter hardy? If I were planting it directly in the soil, when could I plant it? Poppies, I think I would typically plant poppies in, oh, the first part of March. So they're gonna get some freezing thawing there. I would definitely try poppies and, and see what happens. It's, it's hard to know on every single plant, but poppies are much tougher than the Tommy Toad tomatoes. Allison would like to know about sowing redbud seeds this way. Oh, Allison, do you really want to have more redbuds? They grow like crazy. Redbuds are great this way. They love the freeze thaw. They like the stratification. The seeds are a little bit tough. And you notice outdoors around red buds, you get this proliferation of red buds coming up with no problem. It's perfect. You don't have to protect the seedlings, let them come up and they will probably grow better this way than they would trying them indoors in pots. This natural process just seems to make native plants especially take off with this. So red buds, go for it. And we have several questions about what suggestions you have for starts that are successful in this way. What have you had a lot of luck with? Well, I like to use it for perennials, for wildflowers. I have a, a good system in my basement that I've used for years with lights and heat mats and trays. And I can mostly handle my tomatoes and peppers that way because I know when to plant. I know exactly what to expect. I have the facilities to handle them as they get bigger and I'm able to move them around. I will do tomatoes just because I like to see them come up early and it's kind of fun. I don't necessarily get a better job with tomatoes and peppers doing this than I would doing it the other way. But what I really like to use it for are seeds like parsley. Okay, I planted parsley this way. And parsley is sometimes kind of tricky to get it to germinate. Well, it germinated beautifully. It transplanted beautifully. It, it made great plants. The Indian pinks, the spigellas that you saw on that very opening slide, if you noticed that, I had a jug there that had some seedlings growing in the jug. Those were Indian pink spigellas. I collected those seeds the year before. I threw them in the refrigerator. I put them in the jugs. I didn't know what to expect because in the time I've had spigella growing in the garden, I have never had them seed and germinate. They've never spread by seed. And I thought, well, is this seed even viable? But in the jugs, I got almost 100% germination and I have like 35 beautiful one-year-old plants out there that are waiting to go into the garden next year. So. If I could generalize, I would say that any plant that you know is a winter hardy plant is a great way to go this way. Any plant where you're not sure what kind of pretreatment the seed needs, does it need scarification? Does it need stratification? 
go this way because nature kind of takes care of that process. And any plant you're not sure on, go this way. There are just so many possibilities. If somebody gave you something, you're not sure how to plant it, split it up. Go this way with some and go in your windowsill with some others and compare the two. You don't have to put all your eggs in one basket. You can try a few jugs and see how it works. It's just a hard question to give a definite answer for, but try it, experiment. Yeah, we have Michelle and Tommy who both want you to address the stratification process a little bit in more detail. Okay, that's a little specialized thing. So what stratification means, and, and I think you can almost generalize that most wildflowers, most native plants that you're going to find around have seeds that require or benefit from stratification. And what stratification is, is the big word for describing the process of getting cold and wet. Because you think from a plant's point of view, they, the seeds fall on the ground, they don't want them to germinate too soon. They don't want them to germinate till spring. And so one of the ways they can ensure that they won't germinate till spring is to force the seed to go through a cold, wet, process for a period of weeks and that changes the biochemistry it activates biochemical pathways it lets the seeds start to germinate in our refrigerators we often duplicate it we store seeds in the refrigerator you'll put them in a wet paper towel you put them in some damp sand and keep them in the refrigerator so stratification requires cold and wet cold alone is not enough wet alone is not enough it needs to both so being outside and planting in the middle of December, you're gonna get the rest of December and January and February and probably March are, are good stratification temperatures. And it's plenty of time for a long cold wet period because often that has to be of like three or four weeks of cold wet, it's not just a day or two. And that's why this works really well for seeds that require stratification. For those that don't require it, it's not going to hurt them. Tomatoes don't need it but they're still gonna come up in the spring. They're still gonna come up at the right time. So it's going to work either way. Other questions? Thank you. We have a few more. When is the right time to put them out? And can you sow directly where you want the plants to be and use just the top half of the container as a micro greenhouse? Those are two good questions. The first question was, when is the proper time to put them out? And the answer is the proper time is after the temperatures become consistently cold. And so around here, one of the best times to do it is mid-December. Because if you put them out now, some of them are likely to, you don't need stratification, are likely to germinate before it gets cold. And then you're going to have to baby them all winter long. And then you've sort of lost the benefit of doing the winter sowing. So wait till it's consistently cold. Rule of thumb, mid-December for anybody you can go later. People that have good success planting them like tomatoes as late as February in the jugs, and they will still come up around the, the middle of March and still make great plants. So you don't have to go as early as mid-December, but I would say don't go before mid-December. Take your time and wait for that cold. The other question, the second question was, but Melissa, I'm sorry. That's okay. Can you sow directly where you want the plants to be and just use the top half of the container as a micro greenhouse? Yes, you can. And there's quite a bit of discussion about doing that on the Facebook groups that I'm in. It's a challenging process because part of the advantage that you have here with the jugs is that you get freeze thaw of the soil and the seed. If you're sowing directly in the ground, the ground tends to be cool down slower than this relatively small volume of soil, it cools down slower, it doesn't warm up very quickly, so you may not get the freeze thaw cycles, and the freeze thaw seems to really help those seeds come along. The other problem you have is that in the jugs, things tend to germinate a little bit sooner than they do in the ground. And if you just put it in the ground and use the top as a cover, you're making a mini greenhouse. When they do germinate, you still have the problem of asking, well, are they going to be frost hardy, if they're not frost hardy, how am I going to protect them in the ground? It's a lot easier to move the jug into the garage than it is to try to cover it in the ground. So you're missing much of the benefit that the winter sowing process provides. It works. It's like having a little mini hothouse out there and you can do it, but it's a little bit outside the process. If you're going to try it the first time, I strongly suggest that you stay with the system that's, that's tried and true. This works and then start trying other experiments. And we just want to play and experiment and improve it. But 
This works really well, and it's a good basis to build on as you try other techniques like direct sewing. Other question. There is one final question. Candy is starting a community flower cutting garden, and 2021 will be the third season, and she wants to sew some additional varieties. The Cosmos, Bachelor Buttons, Nigella, Poppy, Zinnias, and Verbena have all come back every year. Do you recommend fall hand sewing or container sewing for new varieties? Oh, that is an, an interesting question. Part of me says, wow, whatever works really well, stick with it if they're coming back in the fall. But if they're coming back in the fall really well, it tells me that they're able to handle the spring frost, that they know when to germinate. And again, in the jugs, they may germinate just a little bit sooner. So they may be a little bit more vulnerable. My suggestion would be to try them because those are all relatively hardy flowers. And I would say, take, take a year and try some this way. Take some of your seed and put it out and just see what happens. But the fact that they come back consistently for you as self-seeding tells me that they're very amenable to this. It should work really well. I just am kind of disinclined to put all my eggs in one basket until I've tried it a few times and know what's going to work. Best I can do for you. Thanks, John. You've answered all the questions in the Q&A at this time. Those were great questions. You people are absolutely on to this. That's the end of part two. In part three, we'll see how to handle the young seedlings and answer more audience questions.